All right, I've just changed the title, as you've probably noticed, uh, after talking to Rob earlier. Uh, because it used to be Introduction to Wiremog, but it's, I think it's actually Introduction to Wiremog for Microservice Architectures. So yeah, let's talk about Wiremog. Uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, probably everybody here knows me, but you know, I've been doing this stuff for 10 years now, five of which was BDD pair programming and similar practices. And um, the problem I want us us to think about today is how we build our stubs. So when you go from company to company, you're going to start seeing patterns, and you're going to see that in some large corporations, sometimes you're going to see that people are re redeveloping the same thing across different teams. And sometimes it's going to be more visible, sometimes less. Let's say in some of the banks, you're going to have to look for a long time to see those things being redeveloped. Sometimes in other organizations, you're going to see on the same floor uh, similar things being done over and over again. And what are those things? Well, they're HTTP stops. And they're solving three problems, serving three purposes for the teams. And so they've got an auto, uh, a automated function. So there's going to be a um, interface which allows you to run builds in your uh, CI loop environment and allowing you to do TDD, BDD and things like that. There's going to be a, an interface, usually a GUI interface for the testers. And what that allows you to do is the testers that are on the teams are going to be able to do their exploratory testing. So prime um, uh, the, stuff, the same stuff the developers use and um, uh, test the application. And another thing that uh, those tools have in common is the scenarios. So sometimes those scenarios are going to be hard-coded. Sometimes you'll see people doing things um, uh, not only hard-coded by but uh, they're like you know deployable scenarios to the stub. But basically, what it is is let's say a user logs in, and the user logs in scenario um, uh, needs priming stuff in three backend systems. So the stub's gonna have three responsive prime for three different systems. And what the tester does, it doubly, uh, in that case, gonna prime he or she is gonna prime via the GUI um, the um, login response basically and be able to um, adjust some details in those requests and responses. So those three things, if you, if you see those stuff, do more, uh, more or less do those, those, three, those three things without going into uh, uh, too much detail, uh, basically. So w what happens in the industry? So um, how, how does that look like compared to the other things we do, like logging? Everybody can do logging on their own. If you're talking about the smallest logging possible, it's just doing sysouts or writing to a file. Obviously, you could argue that sometimes you need more of that stuff, but for a lot of applications, all you need is simple bits like that. And what we do is we never write that stuff from scratch. What we do is uh, we use Log4j or something like that. And then, obviously, if you start ramping up the complexity and lose things like databases and figure out why I need the data store, then um, it's almost a no-brainer that you're going to be uh, using an off-the-shelf uh, Oracle MySQL or something like that, etc., etc., etc. So we usually, uh, there's usually productized solutions for different sorts of problems that we solve. And one of the things uh, that you, we could do is use a productized stubbing solution. And one of them is Wirework. It's getting quite popular. It's a Java uh, solution. And I'm not saying you should be doing it or shouldn't be doing it. I'm just proposing this as another option in your toolbox. So basically, I'm not saying, well, you're doing something wrong or, you know, this is, this is the best thing to do. I'm just saying that, you know, have one more tool in your toolbox. One of them is Wiremog. It's a productized version of a HTTP stub. Um, so yeah, um, what Wiremark can do for you is help you with manual exploratory testing as well as the automa it's got automated interfaces as well. And uh, we're going to leave the uh, manual bit for now, because, uh, as most of us here are on the development side. And we're going to have a look at GUnit tests. So we're going to have a weather application that talks to four Castio APIs making HTTP calls. It's going to get the weather forecast as JSON, parse the response, get the current wind speed from that uh, from, from the response and present it to the user via RESTful interface. So we do that in JUnit. We're going to use a JUnit um, rule. It's going to be the Wiremook rule, forecast IO service. Uh, this is basically the stub. So this is the thing that's going to be pretending to be the forecast IO service. 
We're going to have our weather application, our system under test, the usual start and stop methods called in the before and after um, setup methods and teardown methods. And we can start with a simple test, a happy path test. So let's read into that. Um, so basically what the test is going to be is a simple happy path test. We're going to prove that when we fire a request to our weather application, it goes to uh, the forecast IO APIs. When it, return, when, when it gets back a response, we can parse it successfully, um, append a suffix to uh, the response, the, the wind speed, and present it to the user. So we start with the assertion. Uh, we're going to say that, can you guys uh, see that in the back? Mm -hmm. cool. Um, so we're going to start with uh, our assertion, so what we expect to see uh, when we hit the RESTful um, endpoint, we're going to see, uh, we're expecting to see the wind speed followed by a suffix uh, miles per hour. But in order to get that, we need to talk to our application actually, so simple Apache client. Uh, we're going to talk to localhost port and slash wind hyphen speed. That's how we get that response actually, and now our application is going to when we do that, it's going to try and talk to um, the forecast IO APIs. So in order to uh, do that, in this case, forecast IO service, the wiremog stuff is going to pretend to be that forecast IO service. And um, we basically tell it to create a stub for a get, and whenever uh, we, it receives a get your uh, request with a URL equal to slash forecast slash ID slash the GPS coordinates, it should return a response with body and that's the JSON payload. Uh, just for the purpose of this demonstration, obviously the stuff returned by real forecast IO is huge, but this isn't about how to uh, do proper BDD, TDD, how you're going to call it. It's just about um, how to, uh, it's just to demonstrate how um, Wiremock works. So that's how a sample um, happy path would look like. We could have a set path as well. So let's say we don't want to uh, blow up or with a, an exception or something like that to the user whenever there's a problem with the forecast IO service. So let's say whenever we, uh, there's a problem on the forecast IO side, we're going to be uh, presenting a 503 error to the user without blowing up actually. So failing gracefully. Again, uh, talking to the same slash wind speed um, endpoint and stubbing forecast.io. So forecast.io uh, tell it to create a stub for a get request with URL equal to blah and that should return a response with status internal server error. Simple example but um, just to demonstrate you can do both happy and set paths using uh, Wiremock. This is how it looks like the, almost the whole thing. Um, and yeah, obviously this is very simple and it's only an introduction to what this tool can do, and this tool in particular. Uh, keep in mind that we've got only 10 minutes to this kind of stuff, do this, uh, um, present this. And uh, so we've mentioned um, three things in the beginning we'll start to usually do. So first thing is um, <coughs> the, the automated interface, which we had a look at. Then it was uh, the testers when they have a look at the stuff, they need the graphical user interface, and then you need to start deploying the, um, uh, the scenarios. There is such a thing like that, it's called Traffic Pilot. I'm the one of the guys working on it, so the, a disclaimer here. And basically, this is how it looks like it's a GUI. Um, some of you already have those stubs developed in house, so it's going to be quite similar to that. It's just basically a productized version of a stub like that. Um, yeah, trafficpower.com. Um, so yeah, um, we got Wiremock, Traffic Parrot, whatever. Um, what about other tools? There's plenty of those. Um, I've myself found more than 40 already using different language, programming languages, different technologies, etc. And if you want to have a comparison, of, uh, if you're interested in a comparison of those tools, I've compiled the list, they're compared by what protocols do they support. So most of the time you're going to be doing HTTP stubbing, but a lot of people want to do JMS stubbing, custom TCP protocol stubbing, SMTP uh, stubbing, etc., etc., etc. So you got that categorized by that, uh, whether they have GUIs or not, whether how much they cost as well, because some of those tools are fortunately very expensive, especially the ones that support custom TCP protocols and things like that. Um, uh, whether they're supported still or not, so uh, there it is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I would hope that after this talk, uh, what you have now is another tool, if you haven't heard about Wiremock yet, 
uh, is a, have another tool in your toolbox. And um, basically, when you get the, presented with a problem that um, you're going to have to um, create a new stub, um, you're going to have one more option uh, in your pocket. So sometimes the best option is going to be create something in-house from scratch, from zero. But maybe sometimes one of the options is going to be to uh, use something like Wiremog or maybe Monterback, that's another tool that's quite popular recently by the ThoughtWorks guys. And it supports um, SNTP, TCP. It's not Java, but it's JavaScript. So, yeah. Yeah, more information, Wiremog.org, there's plenty of stuff uh, there. And a very interesting talk, Six Principles for Building Photo and Microservices by Christopher Beatty. So the gentleman there describes a lot of sad parts because happy parts are very easy to test, but when it comes to large deployments of microservices, thousands of servers and stuff like that, you're going to start see pro seeing problems you wouldn't think that they existed actually. And things like uh, dropping dropped connections, slow connections in uh, clust uh, clusters, etc. Um, uh, come into surface. And uh, there's automated ways of uh, simulating those environments in a automated fashion in your CI loop. And that talks about, sorry, about that action. And yeah, that's pretty much it.